And we'll go ahead and get started. So I would love for you guys today, um, we're gonna start on our backs. And so it doesn't have to be in complete stillness like a Shavasana, we're gonna kinda, kinda slowly move our way into our practice. And if you enjoy playing music, feel free to hit play or to just enjoy starting to connect with the sound of your voice. Um, and it's interesting that Stuart was sharing that he was, you know, keeping things normal for your grandchildren starting school because the quote that I was going to share with you all today is children are happy because they don't have a file in their minds called all the things that could go wrong. And I think it's really easy as I was talking to my brother yesterday who lives in Florida and we we're talking about so many things. It's so easy to just get like, you know, your brain just goes, what, what if this happens? Or what if that happens? And, you know, and, and, we, and we know as yoga practitioners that the best thing that we can do is dive into this practice and find ourselves in the present moment and not living in this spun up world that we're creating. And there are things that we have to do to prevent things from happening. So we have to spend time thinking about the future. But it's also really important that we, we stop putting so many things in the file of all of the things that could go wrong. So as we sit here kind of at the start of the week, if you're on your back, just kind of imagine, you know, that you're, you're just beginning to awaken yourself into your practice. So maybe it's, you know, just kind of circling through the wrists or the ankles. Maybe it's stretching the arms overhead and begin to take a couple of really nice deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just begin kind of like an organic movement. Maybe it's windshield wipering the legs or shifting the head from side to side or pulling the knees into the chest. But just allow this nice slow start of your practice to help anchor you to this present moment. As we know that when stress or worry or fear come into the mind, which can happen a lot these days in this world that we're living in, it is pulling us into things that have not happened and potentially won't. So the practice has never been more important for us to be present. So as you're here, maybe finding a different kind of motion in the body and bring your awareness to your feeling state about the future and let a wave of complete calm just wash over you to let that file remain empty for the next 60 minutes. Hug your knees into your chest. If you're bringing yourself into a little seed shape to start over again, maybe drawing your nose up to your knees, getting that stretch the whole way down into the low back. And then go ahead and bring the soles of the feet to the mat. And cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh. And just take a moment to kind of press the knee forward and back. Again, just kind of slowly, gradually arriving. Maybe hugging the left knee in, reaching behind the left thigh. And just rock from side to side, iron out the low back, maybe oscillate your head in the opposite direction that the lower body is moving. Maybe stretching the left leg up to the sky and sort of in the same manner when we were in that seed shape, bringing your hands behind your calf and lifting the shoulders and the head, pulling the knee and the nose a little bit closer. And then go ahead and lower the left foot down. Bring the hands back down to the mat, uncross the right foot. And just windshield wiper your legs from side to side. Maybe a few exhalations, releasing through the mouth. And 
And then nice and slowly, bring the feet back to the mat and crossing the left ankle on top of the right thigh. And again, just moving slow. Slowly beginning to send the left knee forward and back. Maybe reaching for behind the thigh, hugging the knee into the chest, just rocking from side to side and beginning the very subtle practice of being present here by not thinking about where we're going next in the physical practice. So instead, just be here, rocking from side to side. Feel your low back, getting a little massage. Maybe taking it to the next variation, straightening the right leg, reaching behind the calf, giving yourself a little more, a little deeper, keeping the left foot nice and awake. And then slowly releasing the right foot back down, uncrossing, and just windshield wipering the legs once again. And the next time that the knees roll over to the right side, go ahead and roll the whole way over and take a moment to pause. And as you're here, a moment of gratitude that you've taken the time to land in the present moment, or to at least work towards it through your practice. Slowly pressing the earth away, rise up to a comfortable seat, maybe cross-legged or coming onto the shins, and just bring your hands to your heart center for a moment. Bow your chin to your chest with your eyes closed or slightly set upon the gaze, for a point, I'm sorry, and Allow yourself to not live in the file of all the things that can go wrong. Allow yourself to just be in the present where none of that can exist. Slowly start to blink the eyes open, draw the chin up from the chest, inhale, sweep your arms up to the sky, maybe taking your gaze upward. And then bring the right palm down to the mat as you stretch up and over with the left arm, maybe bending the right elbow. And then coming the whole way back up, both arms sweep to the sky, bringing the left hand down, stretching up and over through the right. Inhale, sweeping both of the arms back up to the sky. This time twisting to the right, bringing the left hand over to find the right knee. Take a moment to lift through the crown of the head and just a little easy twist, looking over the right shoulder. And then rising back up, sweeping the arms, just slowly awakening the spine as we twist to the left, right hand reaches across. Take a moment to lengthen the spine, take an easy twist, gazing over the shoulder. And then turning back around to center, sweeping the arms up to the sky, gathering the hands through the heart center as you crawl your way forward to all fours. Go ahead and tuck the toes under if this feels okay with the feet and set your hips back towards your heels. And then maybe even pick your knees off of the mat. So you're kind of in more of a crouch as you draw your chin to your chest and continue to press the heels back. And then begin to bring the weight of the hands back towards you. As you land the heels to the mat, lift the hips up and fold forward into Uttanasana. Keep a nice bend into the knees as we start to awaken the hamstrings. So come to a halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And let the exhale bring you back down, a little bend into the knees, fold forward. So just beginning to flush out the spine, lift and lengthen halfway, slowly awakening the body, welcoming it to the present moment in the practice. Root down into the feet, come the whole way up to standing, sweeping the arms up to the sky. And then draw the arms down by the side, bring the hands to support the low back, Pressing into the sacrum as you take a little heart opener. So it can be very subtle here, hugging the shoulder blades onto the back, drop the weight down into the feet. Take a deep inhale as if you could breathe straight into the center of your heart. 
And as you exhale, pull the navel back to the spine, fold the whole way forward, maybe even massaging down the backs of the thighs as you come back to your forward fold. Inhale, coming to a halfway lift. And exhale, folding back in. Bring the hands down to the mat and find your way to downward facing dog. And once you land, welcome some movement, pedal out the heels, awaken a complete awareness into the entire span of your hand, pressing out into all 10 fingers. One more breath, just kind of exploring down dog, letting down dog be so incredibly interesting that nothing else needs to take a spot in your mind. And then adding a little movement, shift your way forward to plank. Exhale, take it back to downward facing dog, just beginning a little bit of flow. Inhaling forward to plank. Exhaling back, down dog. Inhale, coming forward to plank. And this time, pause, but find a little bit of movement in plank. Maybe it's lowering the knees down, just kind of tapping the mat and then drawing them back up. Maybe it's one knee at a time, kind of drifting down, tapping. Maybe it's shifting the heels from side to side, keeping the power in the hands spreading across the shoulders, belly drawing up and in. And then slowly coming back to steadiness in your plank, wait for your exhalation, and then follow it down through Chaturanga the whole way down to the earth. So take a moment wherever you like to have your hands for cobra. You can take them wide off the mat or keep them under the shoulders. Draw the shoulders up, back, and down. And then from here, you're going to take your right shoulder and dip it straight to the midline of your mat. Look over your left shoulder. And then draw the right shoulder up, back, and down. A little twist here as we drop the left shoulder to the very center of the mat, peeking over the right shoulder. And then drawing the left shoulder up, back, and down. Slowly releasing back to the mat. Slide your hands back under your shoulders, tuck your toes. Pull through the navel, rising to plank pose. And then from that same center, pull the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. So from here, step your feet together at the back of the mat and free your right leg up to the sky. And go ahead and bend your knee and open up your hip. Maybe look underneath your arm, look for the foot. Maybe circle around through the ankle, wiggle the toes. And then maybe welcome a little bit of movement into the hip by pulling the knee to the nose and then tracing a circle as you peel it out to the right, up to the sky, and then back through. So starting to move some energy around through the hip into the hamstring. One more round. And then gradually pulling your right knee towards your nose and stepping your foot through. You can use the support of your hand to get there and plant the left heel down for warrior two. So take a moment to really spread out into both of your feet and then let your left arm kind of do a full circle to bring you the whole way up to warrior two. And once you arrive, reach out through the fingertips, rise up through the crown of the head. And as you inhale, you're gonna straighten your right leg, pulling the arms up, maybe take the gaze up. And as you exhale, imagine the air is weighted and push back down through the palms, expanding back out to warrior two. Inhale, pulling up through Mola Bandha, through Uddiyana Bandha, the whole way to the fingertips. And then exhale as if you were cementing yourself back down into the pose. 
So twice more, again, just slowly bringing our body into the practice, finding the union of the body, the breath, the movement, the mind, so we can find the present moment. The next time you come to Warrior Two, just pause. And notice everything about the pose, your shoulders. Notice your elbows, notice your toes. Notice your belly. Notice the crown of the head. And through the study of Warrior Two, notice the presence of the mind. Exhale your way down to the mat, frame out the right foot. And so as always, you can pick your flow here. So maybe you step back to plank and you take that kind of traditional vinyasa through chaturanga, through up dog. But if we were all out to lunch today, we wouldn't order the same thing, we wouldn't flavor it the same way, we wouldn't drink the same thing. So let this truly be your lunch flow. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Bring the big toes to touch, anchor down into the right foot, send the left leg up to the sky. So slow, gradual awakening. First bend the knee, open the hip, maybe wiggle the toes, circle through the ankle. And as we continue to breathe space into the right hamstring, start to find some space in the right hip by circling around. And just be aware of everything that's happening in your body. Anything that feels tight or feels good or is needing some attention. And then gradually step your left foot the whole way through. So setting up the shape of warrior two, grounding down into the right foot and allow the right arm to take a full circle and open you up. Take a moment to arrive, plugging down into the feet and then adding the movement of inhaling, arms sweeping up and exhaling to plug back in, anchoring down. Again, rising through the breath. Exhale, sink back in. So again, maybe close the eyes. Allow yourself to be so busy Noticing yourself in warrior two, noticing your feet pressing into the mat, noticing your breath entering and exiting your body. There's no place other than here. Next time you land in warrior two, busy yourself with being inside of the pose. And then exhale your way down. Your pathway to connect back and down dog. Maybe there's a child's pose along the way. Maybe there's a hold and plank instead of chaturanga or an additional chaturanga. You know the drill. However you want this to show up. Take a breath to arrive in down dog. And then sweep the right leg up to the sky. Bending the knee, freeing the hip. And take one full circle. Healing through, opening up. And then stepping the right foot the whole way through. So setting yourself up once again for warrior two. Slowly rising up, letting the left arm guide you. And landing. So this time, we're gonna flip the right palm and go back to reverse warrior. And then as you draw the right arm the whole way through, you're gonna straighten your right leg and slowly come forward towards triangle pose, bringing the left arm the whole way around. So re-bend the right knee, flip the right palm, go up and back. And play with this idea when you come into triangle, of just the back of your right hand touching the inner calf of the right leg. So we're continuing to root and rise. Again, flip the palm 
and then coming back in. Come back up to warrior two. Pause, busy yourself with the pose. Let that exhale lead you down. Gradually, all knee and down dog. Take a moment in down dog, being busy, feeling the difference in the right and left leg. Wait for your inhale and then send your left leg to the sky. Take one full cycle through the left hip. And then stepping through. So take a moment feeling the essence of warrior two from the ground and then building it the whole way up, expanding. Inhale, flip the palm, peaceful warrior. As you straighten the left leg, back of the left hand touches the inner calf. So really anchoring back into the right foot. When you come forward into triangle, so you're not dumping everything, into the left foot. Let the shoulders get the full circle. One more round. We meet back in warrior two. And then we move to the earth. Landing in down dog. And now move between reverse warrior, triangle and warrior two, and a one breath per movement flow. So again, the idea is to busy yourself so much with being on your mat. Left leg sweeps to the sky. Bend the knee, open the hip. We take out the hip joint mandala. Instead, step the right foot the whole way through. As you inhale, we're going to go the whole way up and back to reverse warrior, flipping the right palm. Let the exhale bring you forward, trikonasana triangle pose, back of the, th of the hand to the inner calf. Sweep the left arm, bending the right knee, come back, warrior two. Exhale to the earth, maybe the whole way through chaturanga, arriving for your heart open. As soon as you land back in down dog, left leg sweeps to the sky. Bend the knee, open the hip, and step the whole way through. Feeling the base of warrior two, taking it the whole way up and back, peaceful warrior. The exhale takes you trikonasan, anchor back into the sole of the right foot. Inhale, bending the left knee, rising back, warrior two. Exhale, maybe the whole way down through Chaturanga, down Nasa. Soon as you land back in down dog, right leg rises. Welcoming the continuous flow. Inhaling the whole way up and back. Circling the arm, coming through, trikonasana, anchoring the left foot down. Inhale, busy yourself, and finding your expression of warrior two, and then moving down to the earth.
left leg when you arrive. Feel free to slow it down even more. Same pathway on the left side. Trikonasana, anchoring into the feet. Warrior two. So we're gonna take one more round, just like that. Maybe the round for you is coming back onto your back, coming back to the beginning. Maybe it's a child's pose. Maybe it's a different flow. Just take this one for yourself. Once you've cycled through the last round, we'll all meet in a place to absorb the opening of our practice. Maybe that's child's pose for you. Maybe it's staying in down dog. Maybe it's sitting on the earth. It's said that children are natural Zen masters. Their world is brand new in each and every moment. The more we can bring ourselves into that mindset in a given day, the healthier we're going to be in our minds. The less things we put in the all the things that can, could go wrong file, the better we're going to be. So one more breath to absorb wherever you are. And allow yourself to feel that 30 minutes of continuous flow and your ability to busy yourself, even if it was for 30 seconds with being present. That's why this is a practice. There's no end game. There's no finish line. We're always evolving and changing and learning. So gradually make your way to down dog from whatever orientation you are in. And then from down dog, go ahead and rise up onto the balls of the feet and pull your belly up and in. And you're just going to walk on the balls of the feet as far forward as you can. So there might be a generous bend in the knees or you can play with really pulling up through the core, bringing the weight into the hands as you make your way to the top of the mat. So all of this is gonna depend on the hamstrings, all built differently, but gradually coming to your forward fold. And once you arrive, even if you're way up high, this is fine, but think about your back being nice and long. So the arms reaching down towards the earth or perhaps the peace fingers are able to wrap around the big toes. And then let your head be completely heavy. And if you've been to the western part of our state, to beautiful Transylvania County and have seen all of the amazing waterfalls, you can imagine a waterfall from anywhere in the world just running along the spine and rinsing out the mind. Maybe getting some of those files so wet that they are not legible. 
One last breath here. And from wherever you are, come to a halfway lift. And fold back in. And with a bend into the knees, reach the fingertips forward and up, coming the whole way up to standing. And connect your hands to your heart center. Drop the shoulders down away from the ears. And begin to shift the weight over into your left foot. Steady the breath as you pull the right knee up. And in the same pose we began in, but in a different orientation. Cross the right ankle on top of the left thigh and begin to sit the hips back bending the standing leg. So you can stay here, or you can play with a little bit of movement. The inhale, you draw the right knee back up. And the exhale, you bring the ankle to the thigh and sit back in. So two more breaths, either staying in stillness or challenging the balance. Last time here, if you're rising with the right knee. And then we come to the figure four, we pause. So perhaps you have blocks or books nearby. We're gonna play with folding forward now, bringing the hands to the earth and straightening the left leg. So back in the forward fold, let the waterfall drain the spine. Bring the contents of the mind. Breathe here. One last breath. We're going to slowly begin to rise up. Bringing the right knee up. You okay with being a little wobbly? Take a big step back with your right foot and you're gonna turn to the right. Turn your right toes out on a diagonal and we're gonna to come to Skandasana. So your left toes are pointing straight out, the right toes towards the back corner of the mat. So if you're familiar with Skandasana, you can stay here or maybe you come down and bring the hands to the heart. So if the right heel isn't touching the mat, feel free to put something underneath it. Or if this doesn't feel good in the body, come back up. So if you're down low, draw your left toes back toward you. And breathe here. One last breath. And then slowly bring the hands down to the mat, lift up, straighten the right leg, and then you're gonna turn your toes slightly in for prasarita. So as you fold into prasarita, keep anchoring into the soles of the feet. And bring your left hand on the mat underneath your heart and take your right arm up to the sky. So there's lots of different variations here. If it's too much for the right shoulder, you can bring your hand to your hip. Or if you want a deeper twist, you could slide your right hand over to your left hip crease. Maybe play with coming up onto your fingertips and coming off the palm of the left hand. You have that right arm behind you. Go ahead and release it. Bring it back down, fold in. And then rising back up halfway, walk your way back over your left foot and step your right foot up to meet it. Folding in. So this time, 
welcoming a shoulder opener in your forward fold. So bringing the hands behind you, maybe you find opposite wrist or opposite forearm, or maybe it's okay to interlace the fingers. And pulling the fist away from the back body. Again, just that imagery, that release of the waterfall. And then releasing the hands back down, coming to your halfway lift, navel draws up and in, folding forward, bending into the knees to safely rise back up to standing, drawing the arms up to the sky and connecting the hands to the heart center. So take a moment, settle your gaze. Feel the length of your body from the soles of your feet to the crown of your head. Shift over into the right foot and draw the left knee up. Allow yourself to be so busy with your balance right now. Crossing the ankle on top of the thigh, sitting back into the figure four shape so you can choose to stay here and marinate. So play with this movement of rising back up, pulling the left knee up. And exhale, sitting back down into the support of the earth. Inhaling to rise. And exhaling. So one more round. If you're in the movement flow. And we'll all come to figure four. Play with now taking this shape into a forward fold. So blocks are lovely here, or books. Play with straightening through the right leg, but keep the integrity of the figure four. Spread out through the toes, press the left knee back towards the back of the mat. One last breath. And then we're going to go back the way that we came. So slowly rising. Allow yourself to be busy with finding the balance if you lose it. You're going to take a big step back with the left foot. Turn to the left, skandas and second side. So bending the left knee, the left toes are pointing towards that back corner of the mat. Maybe you stay here and just kind of give it a little kind of pulse, where you come the whole way down, turning the toes up, and just really drawing the toes back, getting deep into the back of the right leg. And busy yourself with being here. One last breath. So from here, as we bring the hands down, lift yourself back up, turn the toes in slightly, and fold, prasarita pado tanasana. This time, bring the right hand underneath you, taking the left arm up to the sky. And again, if that's too much on the left shoulder, bring the hand to the hip. Or if you want to deepen the twist, wrapping around, and using the left hand to pull the right hip crease back, keeping the hips square. Maybe you come up onto the fingertips of the right hand. You oscillate the head, release tension from the neck. Last breath here. Have the hand behind the back. Go ahead and bring it back down. Walk your way back over your right foot. This time we're going to step back to downward facing dog. So take a deep breath in through the nose and let it go out through the mouth. So we've been prepping the body for going into a deeper hold in Trikonasana and then taking flight into Half Moon, Ardha Chandrasana. So we're going to come back to that original flow. So right leg sweeps to the sky, bend the knee, open the hip. And then exhale, step the right foot, 
the whole way through. Plant the left heel down. We're gonna catch that one breath like Peaceful Warrior. Go the whole way up and back, flip the palm, feel free to slide the left hand back behind you. And then coming into Trikonasana. So bringing the back of the hand to the inner calf and taking the left arm up to the sky. So maybe there's space for you to bring the fingertips down, but just lightly to the earth. So you're reaching as much into the left fingertips and then press the weight evenly into both of your feet. Maybe from here, you draw the left bicep by the ear, turning the pinky down, the palm to the back wall into Utita Trikonasana. Maybe oscillate the head. Busy yourself with being here. Whether you love this pose or hate it, right? Feel everything that's happening inside of it. One last breath. Now bring your left hand to your hip, bend into your right knee, take your gaze forward of your right toes. The right hand comes out in front of the right foot, maybe a block there, and then picking up basically the same shape of triangle. So the hips are facing forward, the left toes are facing forward, the heart is facing forward. Maybe in that same way, you spread the wings in triangle. You sweep the left arm up to the sky. Press back into the left foot as if you had a wall there. And actually, if you have a wall there, press your foot into the wall. It's a great way to get into the pose. Last breath. Bend into the standing leg, come back up. Busy yourself with finding warrior two. And then make your way down to the earth. So how do you absorb that side? Is it taking a flow through? Is it pausing, catching the breath? Is it noticing that you are holding your breath the whole time? So take a moment to reset. However that shows itself for you. When we land in down dog, take a moment to sit and then send the left leg to the sky. Left leg pulls the whole way through. So we come back to that opening sequence, planting the right heel down, rising up to catch one inhalation in your reverse warrior. And then circling through as you straighten the left leg, bring the back of the hand to the inner calf and send the right fingertips up. So often in Trikonasana, we're putting all of this weight right down into the left leg. So send the weight up, take some lightness out of your, your left arm. And if that still feels like you could bring your fingertips to touch the earth, then you can go there. Anchor into the sole of the right foot. Maybe pull your bicep by your ear, spinning the pinky finger down, the palm towards the wall behind you. Busy yourself. Think of all of the triangles that the body is creating with the solid lines, the invisible lines. Give yourself presence. And then sliding the right hand to the hip, bending into that standing leg. Left hand comes down as you rise up. So I'm going to show it to you with the wall because if you have the wall, it's actually really lovely. So you can turn open and bring your foot there, pressing the foot into the wall. Or you could put your back against the wall, right? So many different ways that we can experience the pose. Reach as much as you can into the left fingertips so the right hand gets so light. The left hand, sorry, gets so light, I switched it around. We're gonna take back 
flip back, and come back one time into warrior two. And then make your way down to the earth. Take a flow through if you like. And then go ahead and lower your knees down to the earth. And you're going to shift so that you're sitting in the middle of the mat. So you're turning your legs upa vista so that you're on your mat. You need to kind of adjust where the camera is. And take a moment, take your thumbs and kind of draw your hip creases back. And then use your fingers to kind of lift any of the fleshy bits up and out. So you can feel the sits bones rooting down to the earth. And then flex the feet, spread the toes. Now bring your fingertips down in front of you and push into the fingertips so much that there's a rising up into the crown of the head. So even though it looks like we're not doing too much, very active here to just draw the awareness of the spine staying long. And then keep the spine long, maybe there, start to walk the fingertips forward. Maybe it's a centimeter, okay? Maybe you're able to walk a little bit further forward. So drawing the toes back to the shins brings the intensity of the stretch the whole way up to the hamstring attachment. So just breathe in here. And last breath. And slowly starting to come back up. And from here, you're going to bring your right forearm to your right thigh. So this is the first prama, the first stage. And then you're going to take your left arm up and over. So kind of that same sideways stretch we did at the beginning. So first prama is here. The next prama or stage is to perhaps bring your forearm down to the mat. And then you're going to deepen the length along the side waist. If it feels like there's still space here, you may bring your shoulder down and then reach the hand over towards finding perhaps the toe. But again, all of these poses are designed for us to kind of get off the elevator at the floor that makes sense for the day that we are in. Keep reaching out through the feet. And then we're going to come the whole way back up. Take a moment, bring your fingertips back to the mat. Take a minute to pause. And then bring the left forearm down. So again, it might feel good to just stay right here and kind of circle around through the arm. You never really know what feels best to us until we begin to explore. And this working from home on our mats has given us so much time to really be our best guides. Maybe you're coming down to the forearm onto the earth. Or maybe there's space for the shoulder. Keep rooting the right sits bone down so you're welcoming all of the sideways opening the whole way up into the armpit. And then slowly bring yourself back up. And then from here, we're going to slide the legs back around to the top of the mat. So just kind of readjust yourself. We're going to slowly roll our way the whole way down to the earth and plant the soles of the feet on the mat. So you can take your arms out to a T or to a goddess or whatever feels best in your body. And you're going to cross your right ankle on top of your, I'm sorry, your left ankle on top of your right thigh. So same figure four shape, but we're going to take this into a twist with the potential quad opener as well. So you're going to start to shift your hips just a teeny bit to the left. And then take this entire shape over to the right 
So the sole of the left foot would gradually find the earth or a block or a book or something like that. So you're able to continue to get a deep stretch into your left hip flexor, the external hip flexor. Now, if you want to add a little quad stretch, the left hand reaches down for the right foot. And then you're able to stretch a little further there. Now, if you feel like you can go deeper with the left heel, you would slide it back towards your right hip crease and you'll feel the intensity of the stretch deepen. Let your head turn to the left. Slowly unwinding. Bring yourself back through center, recenter your hips. And then cross the right ankle on top of the left thigh. And scoot your hips just a little bit to the right. And so as you drop this shape over, the sole of the right foot plants and the knee is still upward. So you'll feel this potentially go nice and deep into the external hip flexor. But if you want more, slide your right heel towards your left hip crease and you'll feel that deepen. You add the quad stretch, right hand reaches towards the foot and then let the head drift over to the right. So again, there's so many stages, so many places for us to drop off and the silver lining of practicing from home is I think everyone's more willing to see what works best for their body instead of being worried about doing what everyone else around you is doing, which we all tend to do every once in a while as humans. Just see what works. And slowly beginning to come back out of the pose, bring the hips back to center, plant the feet down, and then take five breaths in a heart opener. So if you wanna come into a supported bridge, bringing a block underneath the sacrum, or interlacing the fingers, pressing down and lifting the hips as you send the knees, the shins forward. Maybe plant the hands by the ears and rise up into Urva Dhanurasan. Again, you really become your best guide, your best teacher. And you're in this home practice. It's like a hybrid of a home practice. You have a guide, right? but you really have the opportunity to go deep into your guide as a teacher. Gradually making your way back down, taking the legs directly up to the sky, letting the weight of the legs press down into the low back, into the sacrum. Feel free to stay here or to shift up into your shoulder stand. When you're in your shoulder stand, they even play with crossing one foot on top of the other and squeezing the inner thighs so that you can lift the weight of the legs up towards the sky a little bit further. Busy yourself with your breath. And take these next few moments to flow towards Shavasana. Whether you shift and take legs at the wall for Shavasana or come to a seated meditation, we lie on the back just as we began, but this time welcoming the stillness, welcoming the quiet, allowing yourself to be so busy with seeking 
the quiet. Noticing the thoughts as they come up and busying yourself with passing past the thought. There's any retention of your breath at that release. A wave of complete calm washed over you from your head to your toes. have found yourself completely busy with Shavasana, this glorious present moment. Welcome you to stay here as long as you can. We're needing to transition to the next part of your day. Just begin that slow awakening we did in the very beginning of class. Nothing forced or pushy. Gradually allowing the movement to bring you onto your right side. In gratitude for the millisecond you found in the present moment or the 60 minutes that you found in the present moment. Gratitude for that time that wasn't wasted worrying about things that are unknown, filling up the file of things that could go wrong. Instead, giving yourself the glorious gift of the now. Coming to a comfortable seat when you're ready, or staying in Shavasana if that's where you are. Bringing your hands to your heart center. Allow yourself to be completely immersed 
in this moment, recognizing that it's a practice. You can't always just flip off the switch, but we can continue to practice. Um, Shanti, 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 peace to all. Namaste.